Hello everyone, my name is Hamza Bashiri and I work as a customer service engineer at SIA. I would like to welcome all of you to today's webinar, Plugging Structural Analysis in a Revit BIM Workflow. Before we get started, for those of you who have never attended a GoTo webinar, you can perform a sound check via the sound check button on your control panel. Feel free to ask questions during the webinar via the chat box and this webinar will be recorded and placed on our support section of the website also on our official YouTube channel. At the end of the presentation we will have a live Q&A. I will try to answer as many questions as I can during the provided timeline. If I don't get to you to your questions I'll apologize now but I promise that I'll follow up on those questions and provide you with an adequate answer afterwards. More and more structural engineers are being asked to participate in a collaborative model-based workflow. However, linking structural analysis and BIM can sometimes be difficult. Some of the reasons are technical and others are that um, the staff hasn't been properly trained or there's a lack of understanding on how to set up a BIM project for a successful exchange. In today's webinar, I'll walk you through a few different ways that you can link structural design and BIM. I'll explain the pros and cons of each of the workflows and then hopefully share with you some tips and tricks that you can then use to make your own process work smoother. Before we dive right into this whole workflow, I have a few slides about the Nemechek Group, in which SIA is one of its brands. Nemechek is one of the world's largest AEC software developers and the largest software de developer outside the United States in what we call the EMEA region, basically uh, Europe, the Middle East and Asia. We develop software across architecture, engineering and construction markets and just a few facts and figures. We have 2.1 million users across 142 countries, a little over 1,800 employees, and the Nemecha group consists of multiple brands, 13 to be specific. On one of our software portfolio you can find Alplan. Alplan is one of the leading BIM applications for the design and modeling of concrete structures. We have also Graphisoft in our portfolio, or Archicad, it's, it's, it's one of the world's most popular BIM applications. Vectorworks, which is a line of Elegant 2 and 3D design software that has gone on becoming the best-selling CAD software on the Mac. Lately, the group has also grown through acquisition. At the end of 2014, we acquired Bluebeam, the world's leading creation, markup and collaboration technology for a paperless workflow. More recently, we have also added design data to our software portfolio. Design data provides software for the steel detailing. Also, Solibri has been acquired, or Solibri Model check, uh, Checker, which is a solution for clash detection and rule-based clash detection. The Namacha Group is more renowned for engineering and construction technology. And the one we are going to focus on talking today is SIA or SIA engineer. And so SIA is part of a new breed of integrated 3D structural design programs. You will see in the presentation that it is a proven solution that offers some very nice benefits for firms using various BIM interoperability workflows. So before we get started, let's just start the agenda for today. So more and more structural engineers are being asked to participate, as I said before, in these collaborative model-based workflows. However, plugging into these 3D processes can be difficult with more traditional, traditionally engineering design software. So with that in mind, the goal of today's presentation is to discuss the various interoperability workflows that exist and how each of these workflows offer benefits and flexibility in, in exchanging structural analysis dat data between Revit and CI Engineer. So the first of the three workflows that we are going to talk today is the direct link or analytical model workflow. It is based on an analytical model in Revit 
which we talk a little bit more about, and exchanging that information with the analytical model in SIA. So for the development of our particular link, we have a strategic partnership with Autodesk through an authorized developer, CATS, based in the UK. So what is supported by the link is an often posed question. So basic geometries such as slabs, floors, walls, um, different materials and support conditions as well as end restraints, loading and combinations including analysis results and reactions can be used as beam annotations we'll look at those later on. You have the ability to track and highlight changes, changes back and forth in your model and also input uh, either an entire model or a part of a model. So basically exporting either your entire model or a part of your model. So you can always say, okay, only export um, the current selection, for example. So many of our customers who are using Revit, they are trying to use this analytical workflow, but they either don't know what the analytical model in Revit does, or they do not pay attention to it. In short, all the structural modeling objects in Revit have an associated analytical line as long as the anal Enable Analytical Model checkbox is active. You can turn that off, but in the most times it is enabled by default. So this analytical line is the line that needs to be adjusted in Revit before an, ex an exchange with an analysis software occurs. So for this purpose, Revit has some basic analytical modeling tools that exist in the model service to adjust various properties of the analytical model including 1D member and extensions, openings, wall adjustments. So now that we understand a little bit about this model-based information in Revit, let's take a look on how we can transfer this data to C Engineer. So the geometry in this model is simple, but it represents maybe some simple cases of items that you have trouble transfer transferring in other softwares. Let me go to that project. Um, yes, so here you can see some simple cases that can cause problems when trying to export this to other uh, analysis software. Uh, curved beams and concrete or steel. Uh, a slab with openings, a building with some curved walls or shell elements. If I enable the analytical model via this way, you can see that the, the, the model consists of some analytical lines and these lines will be transferred to a CIA engineer. So this is a, actually the, the information that is going to be transferred to CIA engineers. So this has to be uh, correctly uh, connected, for example. This can be done when you click on one of those uh, beams and here you have the option analytical adjust and then you can perform one of the following actions. You have also in the Revit link, you can find that under the CATS tab in Revit, uh, the consistency checks. So when you click on, on that, you will get a warning if something isn't okay. In this case, everything is okay. I can close that. So you can find also um, documentation concerning the Revit link. So in the CATS tab, here you can find the Revit link and on the right part of that CAD step you can find all the documentation for instance the getting started guide here you can find some information on how to install uh, the Revit link the workflow um, some basic commands etc you can also find the best practices in order to 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 guarantee a, a perfect exchange between Revit and uh, SIA those can be found in here Another piece of documentation is the help. Um, here you can see that um, you can find some information about, for example, the supported features in the Revit link. Uh, so here you can find the items that are supported, an overview, items that aren't supported, and the most important part of this file is the feature matrix. So you can see in here 
which of the features that you can find in Revit or in SIA uh, are available or can be exchanged between uh, Revit and SIA. We have also a checklist. Uh, you can use that before uh, to, to guarantee uh, a good exchange. Uh, you can take all those um, questions uh, to yes or no, if that's the case. And the final part is about, so here you can find the version number of, of the Revit link. So now I'm using the latest version, currently the latest version for Revit 2017, uh, so the 297 builds of the Revit link. Now when we open up the Revit link via the options button on the left side, you can see the mapping tables in the bottom section of this window. Um, when I click on the preferred tables, uh, you can see the preloaded database that comes with the Revit link. So these the databases will be used to, to map um, the Revit families with uh, the CA engineer uh, library items. Basically, the cross sections and the materials that are used in C Engineer will be correctly mapped with uh, the Revit families. You can also set a priority in here, so you can basically say that it first has to look into this source, and if it doesn't find anything in here, it has to go in here, and then until it finds the specific um, library item. So you can always change the priority via these buttons. We can also look at the user mapping table, which can be found in here. So this is basically a custom a mapping table for the cross sections and for the materials. This can be considered as a custom mapping of elements that didn't exist in the family, or you created a custom family and you want to map those directly. Uh, on the right side, you can find some options that, that can be set uh, to be taken into account during the export or import of your uh, structure. Uh, for instance, you can ignore all the loads during the export or import, or you can say, okay, um, ignore the supports, or do not import the analysis results, etc. So those options can be found in here. At the top part of the Revit link, you can set up your national code, for example, the Bridges Standard, the Euro Codes, uh, the IBC, the Dutch. Uh, Annex. I will let that as the euro code. You can say also that after the export, uh, C Engineer has to be launched so that you directly um, can see the project in C Engineer, and uh, or you can say no, and then it will be saved as an R2S file. So that file can then be later later on be opened in C Engineer via import and then a Revit file. I will show both methods um, uh, right now. So let, let us start with uh, launching C Engineer directly. So exporting the model directly to C Engineer. So I say yes, and I want to create a new project in SIA. So I click on this button to export from Revit to C Engineer. These are all the items in the project, and now the export has started. So basically everything has been exported. Now the Revit link is trying to launch SIA Engineer. You can see that appear in a moment. And I click on it. This is SIA Engineer. It is importing all the structural elements. And now the entire model has been correctly imported in SIA Engineer. I can activate the volumes. And here is the entire model. So I was able to export it from Revit to SIA directly. I can al also do it via another way. I can say, for instance, do not export it directly, but create a file in which the export is uh, saved. So instead of launching SIA Engineer, I click on No. I will not create a new one. I click on Autodesk Revit to SIA Engineer. And now the link asks me to save this uh, file. Had this R2S file, Revit to SIA file. I will save it in this folder. Click on save. Now it is saved, and later on you can import the same model via file, import, and then Revit file. And then 
the program is searching for an R2S file which you have to locate and click on open to to import it so you have ba you have two two uh, way methods of working yeah? so you can export it directly to SIA or you can save that export in an R2S file after the export you can find the log file yeah? so if something didn't went wrong uh, if something did went uh, wrong you can see that in a red color you can always save that log file so that you can always have the documentation of the export. If I go to C Engineer, I can also try to modify something and send it back to Revit. For example, I can try to modify this cross section. Um, so I'll create a new one, an HEA 400, for example. I can also change the name to HEA 400. So I will modify this cross section like this this will be used in here you can see that it has been changed and I can track those changes if I would go back to Revit I can say review and import and via this way you can see the changes and adjust them if needed if I click on review and import now the Revit link is trying to communicate with SIA I can go to the changes menu and here you can see the changes that have occurred. For example, my column has been changed from cross-section. And when I click on import, you can vis visually see that in that in that dialog. But after I click on import, you will see that only the changes have been imported and adjusted in the Revit model. And here you can see that this cross-section has been changed. Now it's also possible to send analytical results back from C Engineer to Revit using Revit Structural Analysis Toolkit. The results including reactions, deformations, 1D and 2D member internal forces um, for all load cases and combinations in the model can be viewed graphically as can be seen in this picture. Beam and reactions can be sent from C Engineer and imported and viewed as beam annotations so that we can use those beam annotations to fix those end reactions. Now in many cases viewing the analytical model in Revit shows some connectivity issues. Let me activate that so I can show it. So these issues tend to occur for a variety of reasons with the most prevalent being that the majority of companies using Revit really don't pay attention to the analytical model at all. So here you can see some of those connectivity issues. We've got beams and some different beams of, and elements not connecting to the floor or not joining at a specific um, node or joint. And so as a result, the poorly connected analytical model must be aligned using tools found in either Revit or in your chosen structural analysis software. And for most structural analysis software, this is a real problem. However, in C Engineer, these issues can be solved when using the alignment tools which we can find in the BIM toolbox. So to show these, we are not going to make any model cleanup in Revit. Uh, we are going to do all the cleanup in SIA Engineer. Because that is where you need to make the analytical model cleanup, since that's where you want to get the analytical results, apply loads. There is where you want to have that connectivity, because if things aren't connected properly, you will get instabilities in your analytical model. As soon as the project is opened, in C Engineer, we can see those connectivity issues, for example, on that same location right here. I will see, for example, that the wind bracings do not uh, align on one node. Now, we could also have imported the foundations via IFC uh, in this case, but we will actually talk about IFC later on in this webinar. But in this case, we're just going to go ahead now and look at the BIM toolbox. So I double click on that. And I'm going to choose the align feature. Do you want to proceed with all entities? Yes.
and then I'm gonna make some adjustments uh, to the properties of the align feature so I'm gonna enable the live preview yeah this way which will give us a live update on how the alignment is going to occur we also are going to turn on the different planes so one for the 1d members and to extend the 2d member planes so that we can see them graphically now there are other options in here in which we can switch some limits as you can see in here maximum node to master plane distance maximum total displacement of nodes we are going to also activate the advanced feature in order to keep the openings in their original position and keep the original shape of the model by eccentricities so basically you can see the model changing uh, when activating these master planes for example eh? so you can see the effect of, of, of what I've uh, selected in here and these blue lines is actually the preview as I stated before so here you can see how um, the alignment is going to occur in your model now if I go to master planes I can see all the planes that are going to be used for the alignment I see that also some diagonal planes are used these are the planes coming from the uh, wind bracings I do not want to use those planes so I can manually um, deselect them via this way like this so that we will align only the elements in an orthogonal way so only the frames and the and the slabs so basically these planes will be used for the alignment of your structure uh, only the orthogonal planes as you can see in here and to execute this alignment I only have to click on run align at the bottom right corner and then C engineer will execute the alignment it has been done and now I can see that everything is properly aligned I can also check if that um, node connection here of the wind bracings on the floor level is all okay and it seems to be all right because I can only I only have one node in here that's connecting all these different members so the um, vertical elements the the diagonals all are um, intersecting in one node the final action that I can do is to, to connect everything via the connect button. I want to proceed with all entities. I can also uh, connect all the 1D members on, in, in the floor as uh, ribs so, so that I have a uh, composite uh, floor. I can click on OK. Everything is now connected. I basically now have aligned my entire structure and connected my entire structure so now I can do uh, apply the loadings and and execute the calculation now since most companies that we meet are not using the analytical model in Revit a separate workflow which allows the exchange of structural modeling information is required so the structural modeling information can be exchanged using IFC for those of you who aren't familiar with IFC IFC is a vendor neutral BIM file format which in utilizes object-based data models for the exchange of information these object-based reference files can then be imported in structural analysis software where they can be used to directly or indirectly create analysis models so really this workflow offers a lot of flexibility over the analytical model workflow because of the types of objects that can be exchanged they are not tied to any predefined set of mapping tables with that in mind let's take a look on how this process works using IFC and SIA engineer so in this model I'm going to import an IFC file via the file import IFC file and I'm going to navigate to that IFC file which contains a precast parking garage project this IFC file was actually made in another software called Vectorworks but if, it could have been also created in Revit since IFC is a vendor neutral format after the import you can see the reference model geometry in C engineer so it's just a general solid geometry there is some data attached on some of the members so if we select a column or a beam we could see some information 
I'm actually going to change the rendering into transparent so that we can see everything in the model at the same time. And so we are going to begin by using the conversion tool that can be found in the BIM toolbox. So I want to convert a general solid into a beam or column. So I select one column, for example. I can then run that conversion tool and you can see that one beam was recognized and it has been converted to a native SIA object, a real column uh, in SIA. I can do the same for all uh, of the rest of the columns. So I can filter on, on that property, on that role column, and now all the columns are selected. I run that same conversion tool for uh, named general salt into beam column and you can see that 71 beams were recognized, thus converted into native SIA objects. The same can be done for 2D members, walls, plates. So if I would select one wall, for instance this one, I can filter again on that roll, like this, and then I can run general salt into plate wall, which will convert that salt into a plate or wall. 151 slabs were recognized, and these have been converted to native SIA objects. One of the other advantages of the reference model workflow is being able to leverage non-structural data and C engineer in order to create an analysis model. In this example, we imported an entire architectural file from Revit, so you can see that in blue transparent is the architectural file, and you can see the structural file in the background in the same model that we created from the architectural model. So in addition, if the architect sends me a new model, I can use the update feature for IFC so that the reference model is updated and then I can implement these changes in my structural model. So this collaboration of models within the analysis software really allows for efficient coordination of design changes without having to use Navisworks or Solibri model check checker or something like that. It really gives the engineer control earlier on the process. Now, since the reference model data can be anything, we can import other model information. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and show the structural and the HVSC model at the same time. Now I'm going to turn my clipping box because I want to focus on this core wall location. So I'm going to change that and then I'm going to activate the clipping box. So I have my shear wall core of the building. It is also where all the main mechanical systems are. There's two mechanical rooms which flank each side of the core uh, wall. And so in orange you can see these mechanical system, systems. This information can be used to apply, uh, for instance, the additional loads for the mechanical rooms. It also shows us where exactly uh, these installations, uh, for example, penetrate through the wall so that we can adjust our structural model with openings. It is really a, a good way to coordinate earlier on the process. This workflow allows us to finalize coordination with more trades or parties. In this case, if I would turn off the clipping box, you can see the three models all in one model. And all of these can be updated multiple times via the update, update IFC feature in C Engineer. So really, the reference model workflow provides engineers with opportunity to leverage data from the BIM software, including Revit, thus creating flexibility in the workflow and removing the dependency on Revit's analytical model. So if you don't manage the analytical model, this is a great way to do that. So here, this is an exam example of a viewpoint of the architectural model. And here we can see uh, the mechanical model in combination with the structural model in one view. Now, by supporting the reference model workflow, C Engineers gives you the interoperability which goes beyond Revit. So through the Open BIM initiative, model exchange is possible with over 150 BIM offering tools, including Revit, Vectorworks, uh, Tecla structures, etc. And in addition, the associations are actively supporting Open BIM through their own interoperability studies as well. These interoperability studies are happening internationally. For example, in the UK, there is the BIM task group in which the UK government has embarked with the industry on a four year program for sector modernization. Central to these ambitions is the adoption of information rich building information technologies that will unlock more efficient ways of working at all stages of the project lifecycle. 
It is also happening on a European level via the EU BIM task group. This task group recognizes the benefits of BIM and they are promoting the use of BIM in the industry. So it's something that's happening not locally but internationally. Now that we've seen both workflows, we have seen the advantages of both workflows. So we can see that some of these workflows have advantages and disadvantages, disadvantages dependent on how you like to model in Revit or what kind of data you have or how you want to exchange that data. However, in other software, the analytical model is the only option for exchange. So what is great in interoperability in C Engineer is that these workflows are not mutually exclusive. It's perfectly possible and in ma many cases practical to use the analytical model in combination with the BIM reference model workflow in order to achieve um, the most accurate and efficient exchange of structural model information. This is actually a case study we worked on for a client. They've sent us the structure, which is actually an office building structure and a, machiner a machinery hall. And we can see that there are some modeling nuances we could figure out. First is the columns with the corbels. You can see here uh, by when I turn on the transparency of the columns that the corbels, corbels aren't represented in the analytical model. So we are going to lose that information or that corbel if we would export the analytical model to SIA engineer. Also, what you can also notice is that in the double T's, we have an analytical line that is cutting right through that opening. That opening has no effect on the analytical line. Therefore, relying solely on the analytical link will make simplifying assumptions when sending data to SIA or any other software. As a result, we are going to use a two-stage approach. The first are these items that we are going to export directly and we know confidently that the analytical representation is correct. So these elements will be exported via the Revit link. And then we have a set of data which are the unexported parts the columns with the corbels, the double T's with openings, the foundations. Uh, these uh, we are going to export via the IFC format. Now, because we have an update feature in CI Engineer, it is possible to import one of the other first and then update the model with the other set of information. So in this case, we see the IFC information in green and we see the active link information in blue. We can also send this data to other software because all those companies we saw on that page support IFC. We can send this information via export IFC and C Engineer to Tecla BIM site or Tecla structures as well. So this print screen is actually in Tecla BIM site. Beyond exchanging data using the direct link and the reference model, C Engineer offers users the ability to plug into the latest graphical scripting workflows. We have the opportunity now to use visual programming. Really, if you are not familiar with this idea of visual programming or graphical scripting, um, the idea is to quickly create and edit complex 3D geometry and information within that geometry to either automate routine tasks in an application or to create middleware software to link various software to integrate workflows. And so we are doing this now through Vectorworks, which is the top screenshot you see there, and this plugin called Marionette. You could also do it via Grasshopper, which is the scripting environment for Rhino, which is an, which can be seen in the bottom screen so, screenshot. And also, alternatively, alternatively, you could use uh, Dynamo, Dynamo for graphical scripting. And since SIA is based on the XML file, we have the full range to import any geometry information based on an XML import. Now, efficient design iterations, um, you know, doing this parametric and graphical scripting study allows for efficient design iterations through the use of those optimization techniques. In this particular case, ACOM has done this to do feasibility studies for roof configurations of stadiums. 
The comment we heard from them is that in the past it would take a really long time to model up these different configurations and to analyze them in order to give the architect an ID of the construction costs, the construction difficulties, etc. And now with these parametric optimization routines they can adjust a few sliders and get a different shape and then run the analysis and do more roof configurations much more quickly. So other parametric studies include some truss optimization and even topological optimization. Here we can actually see the grasshopper workflow in process. This is actually in grasshopper so you can see the sliders that can be used to manipulate the different parts of the geometry. When we've manipulated the geometry in Grasshopper, we can create an XML file. We can save basically the entire project in an XML file and this project can be loaded in via import XML as you can see in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some nodal supports, a pinned and a fixed support. And at this point I can start to add the load cases and consequ consequently also the loads. So I'm going to create a permanent load case. Then I'm going to apply these point forces with a value, let's say, minus 500 kilonewtons. And I will apply these nodal point forces on specific uh, nodes on the structure. So I take this view and I apply, apply them like this. Now I can basically start to create some combinations. I will create a linear ultimate combination and the analysis can be started. After the analysis has been run, you can obtain the deformation as a result for that specific combination. So this is the deformation of the structure. I can also see it in an anim animated view so, so, so that I can gather some insight how it will uh, deform. I can execute a steel code check for that structure. You can see that not all of the members are utilized so I will execute an optimization which will reduce the cross-section and use a thicker wall. And now the unity checks are much higher but still below one. And this is again the deformation after I've optimized my structure. I can also obtain the, nodal, uh, the normal forces in my structure to check if these are okay or not. So you can see how we can take the process all the way from design or parametric design in a platform like Grasshopper and bring it all the way to C-Engineer and to start doing these studies in order to get fast results and good optimized designs. Now just a few resources that I want to point you guys towards. One is Panda Light. Panda Light is a free download for a link between Grasshopper and C-Engineer. Another one is Geometry Gym. Geometry Gym is a consultant. They create IFC and Grasshopper plugins for C Engineer. Case is a BIM consultant creating graphical scripting workflows for many engineering firms. And then the Proving Ground creates other BIM interoperability tools. So these are some good references if you are interested in graphical scripting or IFC scripting. So we've now taken the time to talk about the analytical model, the BIM reference model and the graphical scripting model workflow. Let's take a little bit of time to recap and look at some of the pros and cons of each workflow. So first the analytical model workflow. Obviously it supports the direct transfer of information based on member mapping. The link is bidirectional so changes can be easily pushed back and forth in either direction. The mapping tables are all expandable, so if you want to include your custom family, there is no problem with that. Some of the downfalls is the lack of analytical model in Revit means no transfer. So if you don't manage or don't care to manage the analytical model in Revit, you aren't going to be able to transfer your model via the link. Additionally, cross-sections that aren't in the library won't transfer. So if you have a custom cross-section in cellular beams, other, th other things, maybe complex shells, those elements won't transfer because Revit doesn't accurately model those analytical information or doesn't have a library item for them. For the BIM reference workflow, really one of the pros, there is no limit on the geometry that can be exchanged. You can do anything, tapered members, shells, castellated beams, etc. 
and you don't have to send them to Revit. Eh? You can send them to uh, over 150 uh, different BIM applications thanks to the open open file format of IFC. And you can use non-analytical geometry information, which I think is a really important feature. It's not always about how your structure interacts with the architecture. It's about how it interacts with the MEP system or the site and stuff like that. One of the cons is that there's no mapping table via this workflow, which means no direct mapping of elements. Alignment issues can occur due to the lack of, anal of an analytical model and you need to convert your general uh, geometry via the BIM toolbox in C-Engineer. Finally, this workflow for graphical scripting from either Dynamo, Grasshopper or Vectorworks really gives you the ability to quickly create and edit complex 3D geomet geometries. You can create automation using parametric elements, just as we did with our 3D truss, in which we could manipulate the geometry by adjusting the sliders. It gives us a bidirectional link via XML. Now, the cons really, it requires some computer programming experience and knowledge on one of these platforms, such as Grasshopper, Dynamo or Vectorworks, to properly um, create these models. And it's maybe not that practical for typical structures, such as a simple uh, square building. With that in mind, let's go ahead with some real-life projects on which exchanging of data has been done on. So let's just walk through a few of these. The first one is the New Energy Institute in China. They were able to use a Revit model based on a SketchUp model and then send it to CIA Engineer. This provided a, re a reliable workflow for them to send their model based on its analytical lines from Revit to CIA Engineer. This project has been done in the United Kingdom. It is actually the opposite workflow. They started the, uh, the modeling in CIA Engineer because of the complexity and uh, coordination they needed to do between the truss structure around the building. And then they send it back to Revit for their construction drawings and documentation. This is a great example from Riverstone Structural Concepts in the United States, a great example of the IFC workflow. A lot of times what they find is companies in this example, Riverstone, was using documentation in Archicad, whereas their architect was using documentation in Revit. And so what do you do? In this case, the IFC model was exchanged over the whole platform. So basically an IFC file was um, generated from Revit and uh, used in Archicad where they modified it for structural use. Then the Archicad file was exported via IFC to C Engineer for model construction, loading and engineering analysis. This is an interesting project. This is the Serpentine uh, Gallery Pavilion done by ACOM in the United Kingdom. And what's interesting here, it's, it's using multiple softwares, not only Rhino, but Revit as well. ACOM utilized a custom scripting to create a round trip dat data exchange between Rhino and CA Engineer. So this was important to create an open iterative design process with the arch architect. And for the final documentation, the CA Engineer model was sent to Revit via the di direct analytical link. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. This was a brief introduction on the interoperability between Revit and CA Engineer via the analytical model, uh, the reference model in IFC, or via graphical scripting, or a combination of a couple of them. I would like to thank you all for your time and participation.